Hi, this is Dave Hammer. Today we're going to learn a little bit about building the Cricut Utility Air Hammer. All videos and pamphlets produced by David Hammer are copyright protected. The Cricut videos are available on YouTube for free viewing at this time. I do not give permission for the content to be downloaded nor used for any commercial gain. Metalworking projects require the use of shop equipment. Please exercise caution when using machines. These videos are offered without accepting any liability for your experiences. Your safety is your sole responsibility. This video is part 7 of a series that provides information about how the original Cricut Utility Air Hammer was built. This episode covers part one of the air circuit components installation. This diagram shows all the hose and fitting connections of the air circuit. It can be found and fully explained in the Cricut Operations and Air Circuit document. First we'll go through a discussion of the major air circuit components. This is a Parker brand air cylinder. The model number is shown. It has a 2 inch bore and 8 inch stroke. This cycles the ram. If you're going to be using tooling with your hammer, I would really recommend using a 10 inch cylinder instead of the 8 inch. This is an alignment coupler. It's used to connect the cylinder to the ram. Using this type of coupler removes the requirement of having perfect alignment between the cylinder, rod, and the ram. This Norgren four-way valve is the heart of the air circuit system. It delivers air alternately to the front and rear of the cylinder. This valve is a Norgren roller valve. It's used to signal the four-way valve when it's time to reverse the direction the ram is moving. This is the check valve. It's used on the air input side to prevent backflow when the ram reverses direction. This is a huge performance advantage. The air gate is actually another Norgren roller valve. This valve controls the air moving to the roller valve. This is a butterfly valve. It's ordered from McMaster Car. Two are used. They control the air entering and exiting the air circuit. This is a common ball valve. It's used for venting the cylinder at shutdown. The check valve actually traps air in the cylinder and this valve is used to release that air. The best hammer performance is achieved by installing these components in a tight a cluster as possible. More detail about how these components work and interact with one another can be found in the Cricut Operations and Air Circuit document. The first task will be to make a table spacer. The air circuit components are installed without the table in place. The thickness of the table is significant when determining where to mount the cylinder. The Cricut has a three-quarter inch plate for its table. To make your table spacer, use a piece of steel plate the, th the same thickness as your table will be. Use the die base plate master as a pattern. Drill the holes out to three-eighths of an inch. Set the table spacer on the anvil. The bolt holes should line up. Bolt the lower die and the spacer to the anvil. Put on the ram assembly and tighten the gibbs to set it in its working position. Loosen and tighten the gib adjusters on each side alternately a couple times to be sure that the ram assembly is pulled tight against the tower. 
Lock the assembly in place by tightening the adjustment bolts so the assembly cannot move. Connecting the cylinder rod to the ram assembly. Before the exact placement of the cylinder can be determined, a bracket has to be added to the ram assembly for the alignment coupler to connect to. That connection needs to be as close to the tower as possible. The connection. A nose was added to the side of the ram assembly to be the interface point for the alignment coupler. The nose was cut from one inch stock. The threaded hole for connecting the alignment coupler is drilled and tapped after the cylinder is mounted. Prior to the fabrication of the nose, the cylinder was held up below the ram assembly to determine about how far out the nose had to extend to allow for the cylinder to ram assembly connection. The nose was welded onto the ram assembly in this position. The lower piece was welded first on the underside of the ram assembly. Then the strut was added for support. Next, we determine where to mount the cylinder. This cylinder has four feet, so it needs a platform to be mounted on. Hold the cylinder up with the coupler touching the nose at the approximate position it will connect with the nose. Measure how far away from the tower the cylinder feet need to be. The vertical positioning of the cylinder needs to account for the cylinder rod remaining extended a little when the dies are touching. This is to prevent the cylinder piston from bottoming out against the end cap on the downstroke of a cycle. I used the length of the threads on the alignment coupler as a safety factor. To establish the vertical position of the cylinder, hold the cylinder up so the coupler threads are against the bottom of the nose. Mark this position on the tower to aid in establishing where the upper edge of the cylinder platform needs to be. To make the platform bracket for the cylinder, Use a piece of 4x4x5 four by four by angle iron. One side was cut to the width needed to accommodate how far the platform would be from the tower. Use two of the tower bracket holes for mounting. Drill the holes and mount the bracket. These holes were initially tapped but then drilled through. Determine where the bolt holes for mounting the cylinder need to be by holding up the cylinder in place on the platform with the coupler touching the bottom of the nose. Mark the hole positions. It's critical that the holes be parallel with the tower. Remove the bracket. Drill and tap the holes for the left side of the cylinder. The holes on the right are drilled through Mount the cylinder. Mark the position where the alignment coupler connects to the ram assembly. Center the coupler within itself. Then draw a line around the top of the alignment coupler with the grease pencil to mark where the hole needs to be drilled. Remove the ram assembly, drill and tap the hole on the underside of the nose to match the alignment coupler. Put the ram assembly back on the tower and screw the coupler into the nose. Next, make the bracketing to mount the four-way valve. The four-way valve is mounted in front of the cylinder. This facilitates the shortest possible hose links between the cylinder and the four-way valve. Two pieces of angle iron are used to make the bracket 
for the four-way valve. The first is a one-by-one one angle iron long enough to use the cylinder mount bolts. The second is a four and a half by three inch, about five inches long. Put brass street elbows with hose barbs as shown in ports 2 and 4 on the four-way valve. The valve is then centered between the cylinder ports. Also add a quarter inch hose barb to the spool control port. Bolts holding air valves should only be tightened down snug with lock washers not ratcheted down hard. If the bolts are tightened too firmly, the internal mechanisms may be damaged. Next, we're going to build and mount the air gate assembly. Use a one and a half by quarter inch bar for the backbone. Mark and drill holes to mount this bar behind the four-way valve. Drill holes to mount the air gate about an inch below the four-way valve. Make a swivel arm that will push in the plunger on the air gate using the roller when the arm is pulled up by a spring. The construction detail is similar to putting the lever on the stroke adjustment assembly. Weld that mechanism together. Forge a bracket to hold the spring. This is a picture of the completed air gate assembly. Now the installation. Put the air gate onto the backbone. We have to loosen the uh, four-way valve because we're going to use its bolts and we have to put the bracket for the spring on the front. Slip the air gate assembly up behind the four-way valve. This is a little awkward. When it's all bolted in place, put the spring on. This spring should be rather rigid. This is the front view of the air gate and the arm with the spring and a rear view of the mounted air gate assembly. The air gate is closed when the treadle is in its fully up position. This prevents pressurized air from being forwarded to the roller valve. As the treadle is pressed, the air gate is opened via linkage to the treadle, allowing pressurized air to go to the roller valve. 
These actions support the single hit and clamp features. Next, we're going to plumb the cylinder to the four-way valve. Use Dawn dishwashing liquid and a Q-tip to lubricate all the hoses during assembly. These are rubber hoses and using Dawn makes it so much easier to push these hoses onto the barbs. This one is even a little stubborn. Use stainless steel clamps on all hoses. The next episode is the completion of the air circuit components installation. This is Dave Hammer. Thanks for watching.